Another component very important into this security intelligence uh, scheme is the uh, component, an optional component of uh, our uh, curator, which is called Curator Risk Manager. What Risk Manager Risk Manager allows you to do is it takes configuration information from firewalls and many other networking equipment and allows us to see how the system is configured. And why is that important? For example, if we if I if I were asked are we vulnerable to SNMP type of attacks that I saw that are, are now prevalent? I said, well, the only way for me to know it is, I know that, that those are not happening because our Qflow will detect those things, but am I vulnerable to that? Uh, well, I need to see how my systems are configured. And that's precisely what Risk Manager takes that information for, to, to see, you know, what are the, uh, how do your system are configured. And if, for example, it can detect firewall configuration that is erroneous that you know that, that that firewall should not be configured in that way because of the way that is on the system it can also allows you to detect ineffective rules you say well that rule is really doing nothing but wasting cycles on, on your device so, so modify it or remove it uh, it also allows us to generate topology information and that's the allows us to see things on a visual way and I can and in fact some, some customers enjoy very much the capability of even have a uh, uh, risk manager to generate their network diagram and output it as a visual file so I can have it printed and, and use it for other things. It allows you to do simulation. So you can see, well, if I get this device compromised, how, how would that propagate within my network? Very, very useful information. But Curator also allows you to provide into that context that is needed a baseline. We have two, a technology that allows us to create two windows. One is a 24-hour window, and the other window is a seven-day window that allows us to see What's the normal traffic? What's the normal things being done? Well, and this allows us, for example, to see, well, we've never seen FTP traffic coming from that IP, and now it's going to, you know, some, some, some place in Eastern Europe. W w why is that? Is that that's something abnormal? I should investigate that, that issue. All this technology is what really allows us to filter all that information and take literally billions, the more the merrier. Most SIEM, oh, don't, don't send me more stuff because I'm, I, I'm, I'm busy, I don't even know what to do with everything I have. No, we, we, our philosophy is give me, the more the merrier, the more I can get more context and go give me all those billions of events. And with all that rich context that we provide, I can filter that out and give you just a handful of things. So if you are told that you need to fix 150 things every day that are new, you're not going to be able to do it. You're going to be overwhelmed. But if you are told, well, there are these, these the 10, 20 things, you need to re-image that box, you need to modify that firewall rule, you need to uh, put an IPS in, in this position, uh, you need to put host protection, all those things, then you, you, those are things that you can uh, do, and that, that's basically your job. But what, what else is left? What, one thing that we haven't spoke about is the fourth problem of all these systems is that they're not very useful. They don't help you much with uh, today's threats, which are APTs and internal fraud. I mean, those are the things that are the most prevalent problems. And, and, and uh, let's see why they are not helpful about that and how we can actually help in that space. As we have seen in this uh, video, Curator produces a, a wealth of hot data, uh, and we can call that uh, real-time or near real-time data. It's very fresh about the things that are really happening. It tags the information very nicely and adds, you know, uh, uh, user information, details of the protocols, etc. So we, you can say that, that all that data is not only collected by Curator, but also is enriched 
by all the concepts we provide. You can say that this is a structure data. Of course, it resides on the high performance special database that we have, uh, Ariel, the database that we created for, for special for Curia. This is not a relational database like all the products have that make this stuff that's so, so uh, slow that you, you launch a query and by the time the query comes, literally hours later, you even forgot what you were looking for. Not, not with Curator. It also enriches data with a lot of uh, behavior info. And uh, all those end flows and Q flows are part of that information. And you can say that this, you know, the, the, the order of magnitude that this data is stored on the SIM is on uh, the order of terabytes. And that makes it, you know, the prime tool for SOCs in the market today. No doubt about it. But, you know, for APTs and fraud, as good as this is, this might not be enough. Let me tell you what we do with a, with, with a, a partner product in IBM called Big Insight to help there. Big Insight is our implementation of the Hadoop uh, Big Data. So what we do with the Big Insight is, first of all, when you are doing APTs and fraud, you need to to take not only structured data, but there's a bunch of unstructured data that you actually need to put. One prime example of that on unstructured data is mail. So I need to see all the mail that this particular individual that I'm investigating has been sending. Uh, and, you know, this is mail for yeah, one, two, three years. These attacks, particularly APTs, uh, many studies, if you, if you look at many studies, they, they, they stay in your network for at least a year, if not more, until they are detected. And sometimes it's the FBI or some other agency that tells you about that, that your machine being compromised. So, so you need to process a tremendous amount of data uh, for, for many years on, on, on the mail and see What's, what's been going on, whether it's a person sending email for fraud or whether it's, uh, there's some, some other, you know, uh, reasons. You, you want to see who is disgruntled in my organization. You want to do sentimental analysis of the mail, things like that. But also another component is social, the social network. And again, that's a very unstructured data and there are tons of information. I need to go to LinkedIn and need to go to Facebook and, and find all the data. And of course, we, we put into Big Insights that this nicely tagged data from Curator uh, that, that we uh, were telling you about it, but we do that in an automatic way now through an API. So there's no need to manually load that data. And this allows the, to do searches over over a very long period of time. And again, typically this is years. Some of these fraud, some of these uh, APTs take a great deal of time, but well, they, they do the time to do the scouting. I have another video on, on APTs that you can watch and see all the different faces, but this stuff takes takes a lot of time. And this is a system that generates a tremendous amount of data. So we're talking here about petabytes. You're not going to be able to store that in, 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 S, in your SIM tool. And this tool is not for a SOC individual. This tool is for a, what is called a data analyst. These are typically mathematicians uh, that, that uh, their, their role is to play with a, with, with a component of the tool called the big sheets. Think of it as a multi-dimensional spreadsheet that they use. Uh, and they th their mission is to get some findings about, you know, Things that are not normal, things that should be investigated. They also use to help them in that in that context another component from our friends also from the data space in IBM called I2. And this is a tool that allows you to visualize, do forensic investigation uh, very nicely. So for example, with I2, you can see who connects to who. And that's very important. That's what is called association information. Uh, it also allows you to see when you get all that data in there, it's hard to see what happened first, what happened, what followed it. And so, so if you see how the, if the incidents move in time, 
uh, then it, 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 it really allows you to follow that investigation all oh, that, that that email what, what is that that change in the in the time frame of the email well that's a different time zone well why well because he, that, that email or, or that chat traffic or that Facebook stuff was posted from China or whatever uh, so that's temporal information it also allows you to see incidents in a map that's geospatial information which sometimes is very very useful to uh, to detect uh, relationships and things that otherwise you will miss and with those findings what well, now we have the capability is to feed back through an API again curator with new rules once once the 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 data analyst or the hunter as sometimes some people call it uh, finds that, that there is something strange going on with what particular individual machine etc it can generate new uh, dynamic watch list into curator uh, we call them reference sets to to you know investigate those uh, those uh, individuals in, in more details I hope that with this picture we, we we have explained to you why curator is at the very center of our uh, security intelligence in, in IBM and I hope that I have explained to you what makes it so special so unique in the market